So when I was in high school, I joined this club called the Homebrew Computer Club. And that was a bunch of kids, and we were building the very first microcomputers. I went to high school at Lick Wilmerding High School in San Francisco. I grew up in San Francisco. And we were just fooling around with like an open source software and building kind of stuff in our garages. And everybody in that club got rich. Bill Gates came to our club, Steve Wozniak, Steve Jobs, uh, except for me, because I was interested in using the chips to do SETI. I watched Star Trek. Um, the, the first Star Trek things were coming out. I read a lot of books by Isaac Asimov and George Gamow, and uh, that got me interested in astronomy. Well, I read this book, the ver a, a book that described what NASA's plans were for SETI and how you could do a big SETI program. Then I said, hey, I know how to do it better. I can do it better than these guys uh, because I know a lot about computers. And so I started designing these computers to do SETI. And then I found out that Berkeley had a little fledgling SETI program. The name of the game in SETI is to listen to a lot of channels because you don't know what channel ET might be broadcasting in. They could look at 100 channels simultaneously. So I said, oh, I can build a thing with 1,000 channels. And then I ended up building a thing with 60,000 channels. I said, oh, I got to get to Berkeley and help them out and work in the SETI program. We're trying to answer this question, are we alone? Is anybody out there? People have been asking this for 100,000 years probably. And we are the first generation that may have a chance of actually answering the question. It's actually profound either way. If we find out the universe is teeming with life and we get on the galactic internet, we could learn a lot. Some of these civilizations may be billions of years ahead of us. Uh, Phil Morrison called it, said he, the archaeology of the future, so we could learn what's in our future. Uh, it's also profound the other way. If we find out that we are alone, that's profound too. We better take really good care of life on Earth if, if we're alone in the universe. So my guess is that we will not find an intentional signal you know, that's blasting us from another civilization because they're eager to communicate with us. My guess is that the first thing we're going to find is some artifact of their technology that wasn't really intended for us to find. If it's not a deliberate signal, then it's really hard to predict what kind of signal is it going to be. It's not going to be at, like one of the bands that's perfect for interstellar communication because it's not going to be used for interstellar communication. Much like the way that Earthlings leak off television and radar and radio signals, we don't intend for them to go off into space, but they do go traveling at the speed of light. I Love Lucy's gone past 10,000 stars. The nearby stars have seen The Simpsons. So maybe we'll find something like that, a navigational beacon or something that, you know, they're looking, they're using a radar for making sure that asteroids aren't gonna come bash their planet or something like that. So that means we have to do a much broader search. We have to look at a lot of different wavelengths, a lot of different frequencies for a lot of different signal types. And that's what, what makes it so hard to find these signals if they're out there. And you might say, well, Dan, you've been looking for 40 years, you haven't found a, anything, why do you keep going? And it's actually, it's, we're not, I'm not doing the same thing that I was doing 40 years ago. And the, the technology's changing all the time. We have all these new ideas, we're trying new parts of the spectrum. We're, and it, part of it is just Moore's Law, this incredible increase in computing and electronics technology that's enabling us to do a much bigger and more powerful search. So we're always building some new gadget, we're trying some new thing. And so I think if I was doing the same thing that I was doing 40 years ago, I'd be tired and ready to give up, but I'm not. We're, we've got all these new ideas and we try to launch a new project every year. And there's a, a lot of public support for this thing in the, in the community and in the scientific community as well. And it's not very expensive. Uh, and so it's, you know, I think most people agree that this is something worth doing and very exciting.